All right. So I've done a lot of videos where I make things. Let's do a video where I tear something apart. This is a Canon Prixma MG2520 printer. So this printer was about 30 bucks from Walmart a couple of years ago. And I wanna see if there's anything salvageable in it and just kinda of tear it apart and see how they built it down to the price. Today on ROM Labs. So this is the victim. It's a Canon Pixma MG2520. And like I said, it's a 30 buck printer and it feels like it. So it's, it's incredibly light, uh, a lot of plastic. What I'm hoping to scavenge out of it is the motor here, maybe the ribbon cable, this whole bar assembly. And I'm hoping there might be a step motor or something on the inside. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is just take off some of these excess parts. Um, and I'm not gonna keep stuff like this. Um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna see if that's actually useful. Um, it's a nice clean white panel. Uh, this thing is a little on the dirty side because frankly it's been sitting around here for a little bit. All this excess plastic will come off. And I am not saving any of this because, why? All right. One thing I'd like to show here, it's kind of interesting, this is the power supply. And it throws me for a loop because it is the only thing that is different plastic, it's isolated. Input is 100 to 240 volts at 0.4 amps. Output is 24 volts at 0.63 amps. And I was curious as to why this is so removable because to me it seems silly to make it removable because it's so generic. But you pull this tab down, slide this whole thing there, and then disconnect this blue cable right there. And there is a power supply. It does not feel very robust. And what's kind of interesting, I don't know if you can see it down in there, a security star bit, which I think that should fit. So this is a G.4.5. Yes, that will come undone. Don't know if you'll see that on camera, but that is a, an external spline screw and it fits into a bit like that. So what else is securing this? There it goes. Probably a bunch of solid plastic hooks in there. It just requires some force. What do we got in here? So it's actually very interesting. So. The primary side is actually completely isolated from the board. It's got, I believe, a fuse. So it's a 250 volt, two amp fuse. And it is, I mean, that's some isolation there for you. So this whole board is isolated completely from the second part of the board. And it also has a primary and secondary side here. I'm gonna keep that. And in fact, I'm gonna keep that in its case. I don't think I damaged it too much pulling it apart. Odd power supplies are always a good thing to keep around. So let me clip that all back together. There's one salvage part out of this thing. Let's see what else we can pull out here. Now, just by the look of it, I'm thinking this top section comes off because there's two screws back here. Oh, okay, so that actually, that whole thing comes off like that. So what is attaching it here? I wonder if, did these come off? All right, so I'm gonna take off these bits. Ah, yes, they do. So what you got here is a couple light pipes for the LEDs, all the plastic buttons. Got some couple micro switches. What throws me for a loop is, so we got these buttons here. These are button, These are the tactile buttons that you touch to do various fun, printer functions. We got a button down here that I don't know what is activating. I, oh, it says access door. So there's a little latch right up here. And that corresponds to the action of that switch right there. So it, that's how it's detecting if the access door is open or closed. We'll see if we can save that. Don't want to save any of the plastic because it's plastic. I got two screws here I'm going to pull out and I think that should take off the entire top here. Okay, 
So, very interesting. This whole plastic frame is actually glued. It's, oh, I'm sorry, double-sided tape to the glass panel. Oh, so that does all come off as one piece. Probably try to save this for some project. Of course, it's tempered glass and that just peels off and makes amazing sounds as it does it. So this is the scan bar. Um, it is very much just, it just rides on the cartridge, so. So it just got some guides on the ends here and the bar itself. And what's interesting is I, I, I guess I'd have to get into this a little bit more to figure out exactly how it worked. Um, there's obviously some LEDs. It's got a cable, it was connected to a, maybe a 12 pin cable. So it's gonna have LEDs, it's gonna have some sort of reading assembly in it. So that may be something we explore later on. And then we have this whole assembly. Let me throw that spring away. And I'm gonna pull out here because I really wanna show you guys this too. This is kinda of neat. This is one of these cost saving measures they go through with. All right. So this is the carriage assembly. So actually that's, that's kind of nice. So that, there's the motor with the worm gear on it. Here's the whole transmission assembly. So this is not a servo. This is a standard DC motor. So how is it positioning itself? And what it's got here is it's got a disc and it, it probably will not show up on camera, but that disc has a bunch of tiny little lines and it's got a photo sensor right there that's reading the disc, and that is how it's de determining its position. So, that might be something to play with later. <sighs> now, we're getting into the guts of her. Oh, okay, so, that all goes off that way. The whole top section comes off, and it is still just all molded plastic. So, I'm gonna pull off this ribbon cable here. Throw that over there. I may ever use that in the future, and the plastic gets pitched. The carriage is dri being driven by this motor back here. And it is, okay, that's actually kind of neat. So, I don't know, let me see if I can just see it here. So, if you see what I got my finger on right here, this is the same sort of system that um, was in the scan head, except it's it's stretched all the way across here. This is being detected as it scans there. It's got this, it's a piece of clear film with a bunch of individual lines on it. Get to focus. It just looks dark, but it, it, it's got a bunch of individual lines on it. Down in here is where it does the ink stuff. Um, cleans the print heads and you know primes them and dumps the ink into these things. It's also got, that's just a little silicone white pad there. And it's got one for both of them. Where's the, yeah, right there's the silicone white hood. So that whole assembly pops up and wipes the ink. And uh, I don't want to get my finger too dirty in there. So I'm not going to play with that too much. Uh, otherwise, we have the cartridge. I'm sorry, the carriage. I'm guessing over here is where it parks the heads and seals them to try to avoid ink dripping. Because it's got a nice rubber seal on it and I think it just pops in when it's in place. So it hits, brings those, brings the seals up and interfaces with the print heads. So that's all mechanical. That's just saying, okay, I'm gonna go all the way over and, and hit those. I'm gonna pull off this ribbon cable here. Let me zoom out a bit. Because ultimately I need to get this out of the way. So I don't see how this all, this whole thing is attached. So it's, I, I'm kind of surprised there's no bearings in here. I mean, there's bearings, obviously this is all bearing, but there's no, this is the linear bearing, but it's simply a V groove. And the one up here just feels like a groove as well. Um, so that is what is supporting that print head back and forth. And 
you know, it's built down to a cost, right? So I can feel there's a little bit of grittiness in there. It does not, it does not stay very smooth as it scan, as it uh, goes back and forth. Let's get this control board out of the way here. So this is the control board and it's single, it's like, you know, a couple chips. It's got a USB port, uh, a, a clock on it, an oscillator and the other connections here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these. The blue cable is the primary power feed from the um, power supply down below. And it's got a ferrite bead on it. That is marked LFM. That's marked CRM. And it got that ribbon cable. Pull these two. So here's the circuit board. It is a single chip Taiwan 814400-Q11 Alpha. And it looks like it's the primary drive board. I bet you it's just a, oh, what have we got back here? Got some other stuff here. So you got a couple chips back here, maybe a memory chip. All right, let's keep at it. Um, I want to take this bit of plastic off there. And that's just a guide to keep the belt on the pulley of that motor. I'm gonna take this motor out, which should be just these two screws. There's the drive motor, just simply pulley drive. That drives the carriage back and forth. So I'm thinking that attaches there. This is actually the most secure screws I've seen secure something in this entire assembly. Take this out, perfect. Actually, that way, pull this thing this side. That's really lovely. This is the print head assembly. This is obviously the interface for the print heads themselves. And it just runs back and forth on this V groove track. It's it's got the track, the V groove here. And it's also got a oh, bunch of parts falling off. It also rides back here and it's got some white lithium grease to keep it from twisting too much, I guess, but that's how that all rides together. Um, is it really that simple? So the, I guess the best way to get this off the track, I'm gonna take this stop out right here. And this just slides off the track. Kind of interesting. The way it's actually holding the belt on is it looks like just like a friction fit with a with cut teeth in the plastic, and it looks like this assembly will come off. I don't think I'm gonna be able to save much in this assembly, but I just kind of want to see what that encoder looks like that's in there. And I'm dropping screws. I'll trash. Pull this all out. This is all just plastic, so it gets fit. And what we got? So looks like we got a filter capacitor here. We got the contact, the, I'm sorry, the contacts that attach to the ink cartridge. And this is probably a custom part for Canon. Um, on the back, we just have a couple of um, passives, it looks like, and the sensor. So not much on this board, just an interface board. All right, let's see what else we got. So, it's actually a fairly impressive paper mechanism. I'm not gonna claim to understand exactly how it all works, but this transmission over here, and I, I'll show you what's going on. So assuming there's no paper in it, it's gonna, it doesn't have anything to drive. So there's nothing happening here. When, you, when the motor reverses, it brings this gear set and moves it and causes the entire mechanism to, I guess, latch down on the paper. Uh, as before, you're talking, everything is optical encoded. So optical disc with a bunch of lines on it, sensing its position. But there's a disc, you can see me flexing it there, and it is riding in the slot there to detect the little tiny lines that probably do not show up on the camera. But that's that's what drives the paper. It's just a textured rod that is the paper squeezed against. So, the last thing I'm going to show you. Same thing as before, just a limit switch, but it's optical limit switch. 
no touching, um, and just a bar that breaks breaks the light beam. So, all right, let's see what we're able to salvage. So we got limit switch there. We got this kind of cool motor drive assembly with its optical reader here. Got some ribbon cables that can prove useful for various projects. Got the main control board. I'm not gonna probably reuse this for anything. I just wanna look at it and just kinda see what the um, circuitry on it is and the, the ICs. Got a nice piece of tempered glass. Got a nice looking strip of that material that uh, the sensors read on. A couple buttons, a, a nice big, very white piece of plastic, the 24 volt power supply, the interface board, that motor and transmission, and finally, okay, the belt, and finally the that motor. So, not a bad little haul. I mean, I'm gonna keep these around and see if I can do anything with them. But that's it. So that was the disassembly of a printer. Don't forget about that. That's actually the scanner board itself. It's kind of cool to me just because I want to see what was in it and how they got built to a cost. And I can see why it's cheap. So, you know, a little bit different video this week, but kind of enjoy taking things apart. So, you know, thanks for watching. Make sure you like uh, if you want more videos like this. Make sure you like and comment below. Subscribe to ROM Labs for all my future projects and keep making things or in this case, taking them apart.